Hello everyone, today you will hear an interesting story. I was then a young painter of 25 years old. At one exhibition of talents of young painters, I presented my first paintings. A young girl and a famous painter were interested in my works. Of course, I was more interested in this painter because he had opportunities to promote me and I really needed money. But a girl came up to me and said, these are incredible paintings. You are a very talented painter. Without answering her, I continued to wait for Jack to come to me. Then the girl said in a slightly angry voice, Who are you looking at? I praise your work now, Dixon and others, and you at least say something. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, I answered. Are you saying my work is good? Like in a calmer but still indignant voice, she replied, Yes, your work is beautiful, but you are too absent-minded. I felt ashamed. Without saying anything, I covered my face with my hand. But looking at the girl, she seemed pretty sweet to me, and I felt an extraordinary calmness. And then asked, what exactly did you like about my work? Eh, hey, what's your name by the way? My name is Catherine. Your work is bright enough and, well, calm or something. What's your name, painter? I immediately became interested. Did she feel the same piece that I did? I thought, Benjamin is my name. The girl began to understand that my paintings are not the only thing that attracts her although I didn't answer her right away. I thought she liked me. I didn't know it at the time, but she was also a budding artist, studying at art school, liked to draw her work only in pencil, without using paints. Although this is not a very popular destination. Hermity, in addition to your works, you also have a beautiful name. She said playfully. I was confused, although it was nice, but I didn't know how to talk to girls at all, and somehow it's easier with her, but before I had time to say anything, Jack approached us and began to carefully look at one of my works. Jason said, I'm sorry to break into your conversation, but this picture pokes a finger is incredible. Yes, indeed, Catherine confirmed. After that, I talked with Jack, and we agreed that he would present my work to some of his friends, and then maybe I could sell them at an auction. And Catherine went to see the work of other participants. But when I finished talking to Jack, I tried to find her with my eyes. I was worried that she might have already left, but after collecting my things, I found her in another room, where there were mostly works of painters who draw only in pencil. I gathered my thoughts and decided to approach her. She was talking to one of the painters near his work, virtuing them. I heard that she asked about sharpening pencils, how best to sharpen them so that they would not smear the picture. Not smear the picture. I was surprised because I immediately realized that she was also a painter. But why be surprised? We're at an art exhibition. Hi, Catherine, so you draw too? I asked from behind. She was even a little scared. Yes, I draw too. Benjamin, wait a second. I'll say goodbye to the painter. After that, we spent the whole evening at this exhibition, looked at many works and evaluated them. And in parallel, we quickly found a common language and realized that we like each other. This fateful meeting changed my life. By selling my first paintings at auction, I made a lot of money and became famous in certain circles. We started dating, helped each other in finding ideas for our work. After she graduated from art school, we got married. We opened our own art center and a small shop where we taught children how to draw and sold our work. I was happy, but in one evening, everything changed. After eight years of marriage, having two children, she decided to cheat. That evening, I forgot to bring three paintings to the store that were supposed to sell the next day. Therefore, having arrived home, having a bite to eat, and grabbing the paintings, then probably sending the up, I went to the store. My wife at that time was supposed to be at an international exhibition in a nearby city. The store sold mainly my paintings because, to be honest, she was a weak painter. And with the children who went to study at our center, she did not get along. And basically, I did all the work and barely saw my children. He gets conniving at the store. I saw that seven of my best paintings were missing, for which we were offered $20,000. It was one of the best deals in my life. I panicked and started calling my wife, but she didn't pick up the phone. I looked all over the store and couldn't find them. I called her cleaning lady, and she said that they were taken away today at lunchtime. Some famous painter took them. This was the painter who helped me sell my first paintings. He was a good friend to me and my family, but it seemed strange to me why he took them. I couldn't get through to him either. The next day, I took the children to school, and I decided that I would go to the police to report the loss of paintings from the store. But on the phone, I received a message from my old teacher. 
He was at that exhibition and told me that my wife, along with Jack, sold seven paintings for $72,000. But my teacher recognized my handwriting. He saw me in these works. I did these pictures for almost 11 months. And as it turned out later, my wife and my friend had long planned to assign them and share their money. And they'd been sleeping together for over a year. It broke my heart. I was depressed and very angry at the same time. But pulling myself together, I submitted an application to the International Commission. I wrote that they were my paintings, my wife and her lover appropriated them. Back on the same day, my wife called me and said that she filed for divorce two weeks ago, and the divorce papers were... The divorce papers would come soon, and she asked me to sign them. I started asking her why she was doing this to me, but she hung up, still in my youth. I was not a fool, and I forced my wife to sign a marriage contract, especially after the investigation. I was able to prove that these are my paintings and they appropriated them. I was able to win the court case and leave my wife with almost nothing in the divorce. Thus the investigation into the misappropriation of my works lasted about four months, and the process of divorce took more than six months. But I achieved my goal. I was able to prove that these are my paintings, only due to the fact that I filmed how I do my work. I wanted to make a lot of commercials for the center so that the children could see how the process of creating a picture goes and become interested in learning. My wife, after she lost the case, wanted to accuse me of both domestic violence and plagiarism of pictures. Especially after I managed to leave custody of the children because almost everything was registered on me and I had the means to take care of the children and without me, she had neither a good job nor an education other than art school. The children had a hard time going through this period, but they also decided to support me and wanted to stay with me. After all this, I sued my wife and Jack for stealing my paintings, and she married this artist right after the divorce. By the way, for her sake, he also left his wife and children, but they are worth each other. I sued them for half the price for which they sold them. In addition, such a scandal glorified my paintings even more. That was probably a good plus. I became a famous artist not only in my own country, but even abroad people started buying my paintings. I painted a scandalous collection of seven paintings, and two years later, I managed to sell this collection for $250,000 to a rich man from Western Europe. He decided to buy them after his wife cheated on him. Now I myself am a rich man, almost each of my paintings costs at least $100,000. I married a beautiful woman who had one child, and her husband, a fireman, sadly died in the line of duty. She manages the marketing department in a large office. We met when I contacted her company to advertise my center, of which there are now 15 in the country and 4 in Europe. My kids are finishing school and going to college soon. My ex-wife also divorced that artist, because he was very angry with her for paying compensation to me for the stolen paintings and regrets that he left his family for her. She started having problems with alcohol. I let her see the kids before the addiction turned into something terrible. I can handle it. Forgive me for doing this to you, she spoke. And you have to take yourself in hand for the sake of our children. Either way, you will be their mother. Therefore, stop drinking, find a good job, become a better example for them. I answered her. Later, she did change her mind a bit. My new wife asked her former colleague to enroll her in but to enroll her in evening courses, and within a year, she had mastered the accounting profession. She worked in a small office that sold building materials. She practically did not drink and even met a man, but her health was no longer good and she could not have more children. She turned to me to help her. I hired the best doctor in the country, but he said it was too late to change anything. In the end, her husband began to cheat on her with a young girl, and then completely left her. My children and I tried to support her, but after her husband left, she completely broke down. I lost everything. Foolishly, I had a good life with you and our children, and I traded it for money and another man, and after that it only got worse. How I would like to return everything back. But there's nothing I can do about it. Look how our kids grew up and practically without me. They were better off without me. I've been such a bad mother that the kids are better off without me. Rain, I failed to truly appreciate you. I didn't want it to be like this. She told me the last time we met, I tried to help her. All is not lost yet. Your children do not renounce you, they see you all the time. If you were a really bad mom, they wouldn't even want to see you. I forgave you a long time ago. You need to give up on yourself. You need to continue to live and do everything in our power. Yet the unforeseen happened. One evening, she got very drunk and took a lot of drugs. 
It was barely possible to save her, but the damage to the body was very strong. The nervous system was especially badly damaged. After this tragedy, she needed constant care. The children were very disappointed in her act. I was able to find better conditions for her in one sanatorium. She got better there. The psychological state has improved. But many body systems were permanently broken. After this incident, she could no longer find herself a new mate, but she was finally able to find herself. Periodically, she undergoes treatment. I help her with this. I find many doctors who can help her. She no longer thinks of doing such stupid things with herself. She just wants the calm that we felt when we were young. After all this, I painted a portrait of my ex-wife, Catherine. I don't like drawing portraits, to be honest. But I made an exception. This picture has become the crown of all my creations. I was able to convey everything in it, suffering pain, betrayal, and even that extraordinary calm that once united us. The result is such a poignant and deep picture. The public really likes it. I already receive offers for very large sums for a painting, but most likely I will not sell it, no matter how much someone offers. For it reflects the very essence of me, this very essence of me, what influenced me and made me who I am, betrayal, this defined my life. And since portraits come out so well, I will draw a portrait of Elizabeth, my beloved wife and my children and in general my whole family. Dear listeners, your support is very important to us. If you like our story, please like, comment and subscribe. It's very motivating for us. We need your feedback to improve our content.